rushing towards the mercenary army, spilling first blood by taking down the vile gargoyle. And Lenny, standing as a dragon on the mountain, rending apart demon warriors. And Fumbus, Fumbus, our goblin alchemist, felling great mammoths, monstrous bears, and deadly assassins, finding them no match for his raging poison and flaming bolus. I need a drink. <laughs> Let's all get drunk. <laughs> not you. You, you're cut off. And not you. You need to drive the cart. But everybody else, let's get drunk. Ha <laughs> ha. And then I'll tell you how our heroes finally prove themselves to the Shawanti. Hello, dungeon fans. It is Saturday night. This is uh, the Litching Hour. I'm Kevin from Level 9. Tonight is Tales from the Dungeon. And we are playing the Pathfinder Adventure card game, a dramatic uh, telling of Pathfinder Adventure card game. Hello, Grouch Couch. My Grouch Couch loves. Hello, Last War Poodle, Turkey, and Spooky Sprinkles. Thank you guys for joining me right away. So awesome. I heart you. I uh, Saturday night seemed to be the messiest night for me. I log on, I start streaming, and they... The uh, connection seems bad. I run my network. It's fine. I restart the connection. It's fine now. As we left, last left, hack on Linny and Fumbus. They were out in the in the barbarian lands trying to uh, impress these this barbarian tribes. Right, these three different barbarian tribes. They've been through hell doing this. They've got one last test. After last week, or last time we uh, saw them, they literally had to fight a small army in order, you know, that there was not part of the, wasn't a test. Uh, uh, it just kind of happened. Uh, people, like a little bit of their past catching up with them. Well, not so much the past, but the, the their current problem that they're out there trying to solve, kind of like reinserting itself in the story. Hey, don't forget that there's this queen that's gone mad in this city of um, in the city, and uh, they nobody wants these heroes to do what they're trying to do out here in the uh, in the Cinderlands. They've got one more test to do. Now, as it's written, <gasps> Willie the Wizard has given me ultimate power. Yes, finally. Ha! See you, bitches. Ha! <laughs> I mean, see you, liches. See you, liches, I'm out of here. I've got ultimate fucking power now. Okay. So. Let's see. Let's back up. Um, all right. As it's written in the story right now. So the, the, the final trial is the players have to uh, like hoist these huge uh, totems up. Like these humongous rock totems. And then hold them up for a certain amount of time to prove themselves. We're not going to play uh, fictionally, uh, narratively. For this story, it's going to be... We're going to change it up a little bit. Thanks for all the hosting. I haven't made the little videos yet. I got to I gotta do that on a different... That's going to be this week. That's what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to make little video, more video, different videos for... Well, I've already made a... You're going to see different videos for these. For hosting and all that shit. We're going <laughs> to... Catch up, scrub. Uh, I have After Effects is on a different machine that I'm going to do that on later this week. So, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to switch up the trial just a little bit. What the trial is going to entail is um, there are four different holy spots of the Shawanti tribes, of all three Shawanti tribes, that they all agree are very holy. And... Um, they're going to do something, the tribes are going to do something that unleashes these, these um, bands of, they're called pack land sharks, they're land sharks of some sort. They're going to be going towards these locations to defile them. And uh, the, uh, our, our team, our heroes, have to uh, bounce between them all and defend these places from these uh, land sharks. That's going to be the trial. That's how we're going to work this into our story. Uh, so that we could, and then it's a little bit mechanically speaking, it's this is a little bit of a puzzle uh, because there's four locations. I've got three players, and um, at each location there is a totem deck. 
uh, it starts with one blessing on each totem deck. So each four decks have one totem in them right now. At the end of any player's turn, if any of the un, um, unoccupied locations don't have a totem card in their pile, we lose automatically. And uh, do we... I think we re remove them at the end of... Hold on. No, no, no. I'm sorry. When you... <laughs> at the end of your turn, banish a boon from each unoccupied location's totem pile. If you can't, you lose. So basically... There's four locations, only three of us. One of us, or a couple of us, have to be bouncing between locations and making sure we feed a card from our own hand into the totem pile, uh, which means we we get we get down one card. But we're and it's also taking and anytime we like fail a roll against some kind of beast or anything, that that totem card goes away as well. What's great though is the last couple times we've played, it seems like it seemed like you've got to get through the whole fucking location pile before we could finish. That's not the case tonight. T tonight, we just have to find in each deck the baddies and defeat them. So that's what, mechanically speaking, back to story. Okay, so after a night's rest or two, actually, the Shawanti tribe is very gracious. And since the, the, the teams did, uh, the heroes did end up fighting a small army, they gave them two or three days to rest up gave them supplies, and then told them, like, while they did do all this, in order to really um, cement the uh, the help of the Shawanti tribe in figuring out what the Crown of Thorns is all, Horns is all about, they need to do one last thing. So, we're all rested up, ready to go. However, people have been smelling uh, the... If you remember, uh, Fumbus had made a friend. Uh, the Shawanti ranger from the third tribe that was particularly hard to, for them to bring into the fold. Uh, she was really impressed with everything she saw. For, I, fuck, I was impressed. Uh, and he, uh, she's been hanging around, and she's noticed his smell. And uh, and uh, Lenny's noticed his smell, too. So Fumbus is rotting in the inside out, from the inside out, and it's starting to show. And he doesn't want to talk about it. And uh, the ranger uh, talked to Lenny outside of... Um, well, away from Fumbus. Hey, Precious Paul. Nice to see you, buddy. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, so, uh, they've been discussing his problem, and they confront him. And Fumbus, he, at first, he just wants to run away, because he doesn't... Fumbus ain't the... You know, he doesn't uh, think about himself <laughs> in that way. You know what I mean? He's busy making some potions, getting his ass... Uh, just He keeps wanting to innovate and create. That's all. He's got a one-track mind. He's, if he's not making shit, then he's, uh, he's uh, out there uh, running. He's a little bit of an adrenaline junkie uh, and, uh, and crafting junkie. And he doesn't think big picture. He knows that he's dying, though. He can feel it. And uh, they confront him, and he doesn't want anything to do with him uh, at first. And um, they know they got to get this trial done. He's, he assures them that he's okay, uh, that it's just say it's a goblin thing. <laughs> that keeps them at bay for this moment but um we're gonna see how he does in this adventure in this mission um okay so we're caught up the what they're gonna do okay so they have to protect these uh four holy spots so each one's gonna start at a different place Hakon is gonna start the game off at the in the cinderlands at the holy spot in the cinderlands at this location, on your check against a monster or a respect card, if the result is less than your party's respect points, we have an abysmal respect point total. We have like a three, I think. Four? Four, maybe. So that's not ever going to happen. All right. Um, Got to succeed at a constitution, fortitude, or survival check. Oh, well, maybe he isn't going to start there. Hold on. We're actually going to be closing locations this time, so that's cool. Maybe we'll start him somewhere else. Acquire the top. Oh, that's a pretty easy one. Top card, bury an armor or the top card of your deck. Okay. Hakon's going to start in the mountain, which seems, uh, yeah. You know, it's a goblin problem. Oh, oh, okay. All right. They're not very, um, they, they don't, their knowledge of, uh, goblins and their problems is not very extensive. The barbarians and the the gnomes of the world. Hakon, quite po I mean, uh, Fumbus is quite possibly the only goblin they've ever met. And now we're gonna remember to play music.
Okay. Hakon got a new weapon last time, which I'm pretty excited about using. And he drew it tonight, too. The Thundering Earthbreaker. It's pretty badass. He still has his Dragon Bane Greatsword. He's got Osseo Carowin in his hand, Magic Eye, which I found last time to be invaluable playing at first, so we're going to do that again. And he's got his War Drum. That music should be good. Well, that's good. Beer fresh and hoppy is good. Shall we? We shall. Let me make sure I remember everything I gotta do. At the start of your turn, you may take a boon from your hand and put it in the pile. This is the pile, the, right here is a, the pile of, um, the totem pile. I think he's gonna do that. Oh, shit. Which one's he gonna do, though? Alright, he's gonna... At the beginning of his turn, he's gonna put a boon here. Just to kind of beef us up, because I think at the end of... I think he's gonna move. Somebody's gotta move. So one thing, I, I think I did play this wrong in the, in the last episode. Um, moving happens, you get a choice in the beginning of your turn to do something and then uh, then you can move. And uh, I can give a card to another character, advance the hour and then move to a distant location. So I gotta decide to do that before I encounter that card. The hour, the winged serpent. Your range check is blessed. Okay, well thank you very much. Precious Paul, you need to let me know if the music is good. I think it's at a good level. I did test it this time. All right. All right, he's going to feed a card to the totem. Who's going to be our mover? See, that's why I need to mark this off for Hakon. I just realized... I've been avoiding this this uh, skill of his here, which is at the end of your turn you may move. Any local characters may move with you. Now I see why helpful that is. That gives him the option he could play this and then move, which is would have been a really smart play. After studying the maps, Hakon, Lenny, and Fumbus come up with a plan. Hakon's gonna approach the mountain. Um, Lenny is going to go to the uh, go to the Cinderland location. Fumbus is going to go to the cliff. Uh, Hakon is going to bounce between the dunes and the mountain. Uh, he's going to go up. It's not. He doesn't have to go very far up the mountain. Um, a different different location. If you imagine the Cinderlands being kind of ringed by uh, mountains and. Uh, dunes off to one side and mountains on the other um well the mountains kind of go kind of ring it with dunes on to one side so Hakon will go up to one location and move as fast as he can to the other to guard it we're going to try that for a while where Hakon is going to move as fast as he can between the two and let Lenny and Fumbus hold fort on their two locations at the mountain, at this start of your turn, succeed at a wisdom or survival four plus check or suffer the scourge exhausted. Okay, that's great. Okay. So he's got to do that shit right away. Wait, oh, wait. He's a he's terrible one, too. Shit. Okay, so that's a no. We're going to roll it back. We're going to roll it back. I wanted Lenny on the mountain anyway, because his survival and his wisdom is is abysmal, abysmal, abysmal. It's the second time I have to say that word. Okay. Okay. New plan. New plan. He's gonna start at the dunes. When you encounter a bane and do not defeat it, discard the top card, uh, the top blessing of the hourglass. Okay, great. Uh, to close a guard, acquire the top blessing of the hourglass. Okay. Easy peasy. He's going out into the desert. He's going to play this card to the totem still. And um, because he does that, he's going to be honor tested. He acquires the scourge honor tested. Oh, where did I put those? Okay. 
Honor tested. This makes it great. Oh, oh, you think they're a little squishy? Oh, oh, we'll show you. We'll show you. Well, did you watch last episode? Have you been paying it? Well, then again. Well, last episode, uh, no, I still got some help from the, from you guys. Not a whole lot. Not as much help as I got from a, for a Pocket for World <laughs> last game. Uh, honor tested. When you encounter a monster, discard a card and add three to your checks against it. If you cannot discard, the monster is evaded. When you evade a monster, remove the scourge at the end of your scenario. Gain one respect point. Okay. Because he plays... So, Hakon goes... He's the first one who goes out into the desert to where it, he was He was told the holy spot would be. Uh, after traveling for a little while, dune after dune, he starts thinking, okay, maybe I've gone the wrong direction. But just going over one, one dune, he sees the... Uh, just like they had told him, it looks like an oasis made of stone. Um, and sure, sure enough, when he gets there, it's a ring of stone, um, of uh, large stone pillars in a circle, with a small uh, uh, pool in the middle. It looks man-made or at least person-made with um, concrete, and uh, the bottom is endless. Though, um, there's un what's weird is there's no tracks around it or anything. So, if it's an oasis, no one's using it. To drink as I animals or other people um, it is indeed it does indeed give off a feel of um, holiness so he pays his respect he's gotten there he's gonna leave a card here and then let's see what greets him there we got this Ooh. Um, let us play this we're gonna um, we're gonna play this. We're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna play this session a little bit. Um, or we're gonna play with time a little bit, not be so like minute by minute. He gets there, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll say this. It's a long night. That's what it is. So the the beasts that are being released by the tribes, they've performed this ritual, which allows the barrier to be broken on these beasts that they've kept. Kind of um, as a tri as tribes, they've kept them kind of at bay. At bay, they're ancient enemies. These these land shark uh, animals or minions of an ancient enemy. Uh, they're letting letting them loose, and they're gonna they're gonna start coming towards these holy places. They're gonna move throughout the night. So when Hakon gets there, he had traveled most of the day to get there, or not most of the day, half a day, and. Uh, to get to this this holy spot and now it's evenings falling he's making himself a campfire um he thought maybe that nothing comes to feed here because he didn't see any tracks but he is wrong things do come to feed they just come at night and uh this this time what comes to drink isn't coming to drink the water and it comes a lot more quietly than he anticipated um Okay, so there's no starting at powers. He's on edge. He's ready. So even though it comes quietly, he's still... Yeah, see, I, I said I was going to cast Magic Eye, but I didn't. But that's okay. He'll cast it next. Um, he feels it rather than hears it. Flit around the, around the camp. Something circling him. Around the, the circles of stones. So he gets up, though. It's not so sure about the fire. That's the problem for it. Uh... All he sees is finally his red eyes, and he knows he's being hunted. Um, and finally, at last, it jumps out. Uh, oh, he! You know what he does? Knowing that he's keeping it at bay with the fire, that's just going to keep you know circling around the outside, and knowing that he's going to have to fight these other things that come in. This must not be them because they were—they're going to be a pack. He knows. He moves outside of the fire. The ring of the fire to kind of draw it to him, uh, drawing his dragonbane. Um, but they both do the same amount of damage, so we're gonna since we haven't used this yet. He hasn't got a chance to use it yet, so he's gonna use this thundering earthbreaker. It like speaks his name. He can almost hear it when he when he draws it. The heft 
Let's hack on. Hack on. All right, so this this guy, he is a 48. He's a 19. 19 veteran. Okay. Hack on. D10. Um, D10 plus a D12. Where are my D12s at? Okay. Let's do this then. Color is very important. D10 plus D12. We got plus two. We got plus three is five. Plus five. He needs a 19. Not the absolute best. Well, he can use his diplomacy if he wants to disc bury a card or discard a card. Hmm. Okay, he's gonna discard his dragon bane to add his diplomacy, which is d8 plus another four, so nine plus nine. I'll take that. He only, needs a, he only needs a 10 now. Seven, eight, nine, ten plus nine is 19. It comes faster than he was thinking, but still not fast enough. Uh, and well, it came fast. He knew it was gonna come fast, actually. It's just he'd never used the uh, this weapon before. And uh, it swung a little differently than he was expecting. He was a little worried at first, but it did cause does come crashing down on top of the ghoul's head, smashing it into the ground. First blood. Well, it doesn't have any blood. Hey, Kingfishy. Welcome, welcome to the show, buddy. All right, um, we can't move. It's the end of the turn. We have to ditch a, a card from a totem from one of the places that's not... Oh, wait. We haven't figured out exactly where everybody's going. <laughs> well, Cinderland's the start of your... No, that was to close it. One of them was the start of your turn. You have to do a survival check. That is totally Lenny's bag. So Lenny's going to be the mountain... Uh, Formbus is going to be at the cliff, so the Cinderlands loses its courtesan, the, uh, boom. Oh, man, thank you, Fishy. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. I wish you could make it to next weekend, buddy. You could at least watch, though, and I'm trying to cook up a cool way for you to, inter for everybody to interact with the, uh, the uh, funnel, the shit that's going down with the lich next weekend. Thank you very much, Grouch Couch, for your sub too. Did I miss it? Thank you very much, everybody. Um, you're why I keep doing it. Um, okay, we're gonna pass hack on. We lost the card out of another because. The night goes on and no one's there to protect that holy spot. So we lose a little bit of the totem. That means Hakon's not going to be able to run over there. It's going to have to be... It's going to have to be Lenny. It has to be Lenny. Shiza. Hey, stupid internet. That's mean. What did the internet ever do to you? Oh, wait. It probably kicked you off. Yeah, Fishy, it'll be something like what you guys do with spending dice. It might be just spending silver like I got. I might just use that. Um, I want to think of something better than... Well, in addition to having somebody re-roll, maybe. Because the players are going to need re-rolls. Or they're going to probably die. A lot. Fast. So that's a given. But I don't know how I want to spend it. It's like a one shot. Uh, I'll let you know. You'll know the night of. Uh, five, okay, five, six. 
Okay, Lenny. Now we're moving from the dunes. Lenny, as per the plan, heads out, had headed out to the mountain. Also taking her. Oh, so this is this is how this runs. The mountains, uh, the the location of in of the holy spot in the Cinderlands is actually not very far from the one that looks that um sits above in the mountains and the, the lower to mid foothills of the mountains. So it's decided that she will run to the mountain, um, pay, uh, set up a perimeter of sorts for the one, and then rush down to the Cinderlands to do the same there. Her starting hand. And it makes the most sense because she's the most mobile from a fictional standpoint, being able to run as a fox or as Drugami. Hey, Cat Chat. Hello. Of course we missed you. Absolutely. How did your stream go? Your uh, Jack, in Jack in the Box. All right. So, uh, at the start of your turn, succeeded a Wisdom or Survival check. Okay. Will do. Hold on. I just realized something. Okay, um, uh, Hakon was honor tested. He needed to discard a card to add three to fight that ghoul. Which probably would have meant, well, he would have barely, he still wouldn't have made it. I still had to do everything I did, so I just had to discard a card and redraw one. Um, survival four plus four, so survival eight. Okay, that's all right. She's kind of, that's kind of her gig. She's got survival plus seven, so yeah. So she doesn't have to roll. That's pretty awesome. So she does not. Ex so Lenny tears up the hill towards the location of this of the of the um, holy spot that she's going to defend. One of them, and uh, it's easy going for her. The hill actually isn't that the the foothills that she goes up aren't that difficult for her running up in cat form. Before she knows it, she gets to her location earlier than um, than Fumbus and Hakon get to theirs, and she's able to sniff uh, sniff it out, and um, she puts a few things down in place. Uh, she kind of scopes out the area. That's what she does. She scopes out the area, gets herself familiar with uh, the area of the. There's another ring of stones, uh, nestled into um, uh, a little a little hill uh, right up against a mountain. Uh, it's almost surprising to find them there. Uh, she scopes out the area in the nearby area and finds herself a nice little high spot, a point where she can watch over the stones. And uh, this is gonna be, she's gonna discard, she's gonna put a card in the totem pile, which gives her honor tested, Scourge. And then she's gonna move and she's gonna leave and go to the Cinderlands. Which doesn't have a card. Thank you for the bits, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. So everybody's having internet issues. Okay. Good to know. Bits, 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 bits. Woo! All right. Um. Racing back down the, the the foothills is of course takes doesn't take as much time, and uh, she gets down there right at early evening to the location. She finds the other location of Ring of Stones uh, just as night's falling. Her plan is to stay there for the night for a portion of the night and then get back up to the place in the mountains. Uh, so in the Cinderlands, on her check against the monster, respect. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, here, there is no totem card, but that can only happen. She can only put one there at the start of her turn, so she's not able to kind of scout out the area. She instead uh, finds herself a place to uh, to rest because she's been running all day. 
and waits for a little while, waits for the moon to rise. The hour is uh, on your check against an animal or elemental card, add 1d4. Gozra's growth. So this holy place is just like the one that's in the desert. They're all a ring of stones with a of them um, a carved or man, I want to say man-made, but a made a crafted pool in the middle. All of them look like they've they're never drank out of because all of them are um, places of power that uh, the local wildlife stay away from. Um, however, th because they're a place of power, they draw other things, and when you add. A living thing that it if everything else avoids these things then uh, when something new comes and comes into the circle of stones everything that would feed on living and every evil thing in the world in the in the immediate area can sense that someone has come it's almost uh, it's like a psychic feeding it's like a psychic um, watering hole yes that's it psychic watering hole and having Lenny and hack on visit the psychic that kind of alerted predators nearby psychic predators a bar guest being one of them and uh, he comes to feed as well uh, if this banner would be defeated okay I check against the monster if there's all okay uh, and you check against the animal elemental it is neither okay so she sees it before it sees her and she uh, what's she gonna do She's going cat form. Well, she's is cat form. She's gonna leap down and t dispatch this thing. Based on the um the description of what the tribesmen told her of the pack, these things that are coming to defile these holy places, this is not one of them, but it certainly needs to be taken care of. She's honor tested, which means she needs to discard a card. And she's gonna add three to checks against it. So she's gonna discard a spell. And she's going to go and she's going to discard this so that she's animal shape. So she's, um, it gives her D10 plus D6. Um, a local check that involves an animal trait, another D6. She comes in fur and fangs and talons and claws. Truly horrifying at night, even especially for something like the Bar Geast. It has no idea. It thinks it's horrifying. No, no. It has not yet met Lenny. So that's a survival check. That's plus freaking seven. Plus three for monitor tested is ten. This is this thing's only a thirteen. <laughs> Poor guy. I almost feel bad for him. Oh right, if I get more than twenty, we get honor points or respect points. That's okay. Well, she that's eight, nine, plus tens, nineteen. It's not plus twenty, but it, it did hurt him pretty bad. Yet. Okay. It's over within minutes, and she's dragging its corpse away out of the. Uh, oh, you're gonna add a die? Okay, dokey. Be like a blessing. We'll add a d10. So, I don't know. Ten, eight, nine, nineteen, and uh, ten is twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Um. Well, it's still uh, still four points away. What you drinking? <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, precious. Am I missing any pluses? No. Oh, plus the card level. That's only one, though. I think, yeah. So I got a. I got. I miss. I'm, I was two away. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's a seven. Uh, I got to record. We got to. No, I don't think. We'll 
use this to keep track of our respect points. This thing comes prowling in. It's big. It's um looks like something between a bat and a bear and a ghoul, right? It comes crawling in on all fours, but it looks like something that could walk on two feet. It, it kind of gets up a little bit, it's sniffing around, and it's huge, and it has no idea what's lurking above it until it's too late. And she comes down with um, uh, claws gripping onto its its shoulders and her neck, her fangs d burying themselves deep into the back of its head. It doesn't even make a sound as it falls to the ground, and she just rips out rips out the back of its brain and head and spits it and then she she's immediately pulling it back underneath the cliff nearby to keep his body out of the way and not to defile the place that she's at anymore nice well that's pretty cool maybe I need to fix now nah, yeah fuck it I like have everybody having ample opportunity to help me this game is hard um I mean uh, yeah yeah, I'm not, I'm, I've been playing these on this on the easy, uh, this uh, yeah easy mode. Small deck. That's what I was trying to get. Small deck. All right. You no know, small deck, man. Okay. Um. All right. So that's the end of hurt. We're gonna. We're not gonna go any further. Um, what's unoccupied? Okay, so the other location that's unoccupied, the night's starting to fall. It's starting to be, um, starting to, uh, it's less protected. We've got to ditch a totem card from the, where'd she go? The mountain. Yep. So we got to vanish, oh man, that sucks. Her snake. I gotta be careful what, about what I discard for this. This is tricky. Alright, so she's at the Sunderlands. End of her turn, and now it's our boy Fumbus. Thank you. Small deck. <laughs> Small deck. Okay, Fumbus. Okay, on the south side of the Cinderlands is um, the the mountains kind of curve around south to west. Um, Fumbus finds the other um, holy holy place on a cliff overlooking the Cinderlands. Like the others, it's a ring of stones with a small pool in the middle. Um, it doesn't it doesn't take him very long to find it. Um, especially because he can see it, he saw it well before he found it because he can see it overlooking the, um, uh, he can see it uh, on the cliff. He can see this, it looked like uh, jaws of some beast, at least the bottom jaws, fangs. He's going to, he's going to be staying here, so I'm not going to ditch a card. He's not going to be moving. Oh, wait, wait, no. He doesn't have to, because the mountain has one. The mountain's going to lose one, but she's going to be able to go there. Oh, wait. Hackon's going to have to go there. This is going to be nuts. This is nuts. Yeah. Okay, fine. The hour. When you would discard a boon to bless a strength or constitution check, you may recharge it instead. Okay. Night falls at the holy place that uh, Fumbus has set up camp. Fumbus is like Linny. He doesn't, he doesn't, um, while he loves fire, he doesn't necessarily need it. He prefers a shadow of darkness. Hey, are you guys, uh, is Everstorm already down? Seems like you guys have just started. Or are you uh you bouncing over while you guys play? Hey precious Paul, you have a great night, man. Thank you very much for the bits. Buddy, I hope you can make it next Saturday. Or at least come and watch. That would be awesome too. Very awesome. 
I hope for either thing. Um, little bit of luck. A little bit of luck. Fumbus appears to be the cliff is the first place these um, these evil minions had been let go or to reach. Uh, Fumbus has just barely made his little shadow camp, uh, ready readied himself uh, in the shadows, no fire or nothing to wait this out. When he hears scraping, and he he gets ready. And it sounds like it might be an animal of sorts. Maybe it's just like, um, usually wolves are a lot more quiet. Maybe is it a pack of bears? Bears don't, bears don't travel in packs or herds or. He's trying to think of what the word is for a group of bears and why it's even possible when large shadows come and they seem to come. There's one for every stone. It seems at first he sees one and then another, and he looks and there's yeah another and they're all coming in. Uh, coming in, there's um six stones placed around. Six of these shapes that come in, um, moving in towards the pool of water in the center. And he realizes that his uh, that his quarry has come. At this location, on your check, if any die shows a one or two, count it as zero. Okay, you gotta either succeed a dexterity or acrobatics check or suffer 1d6 combat damage to close it. That's cool. That means he closes it no matter what. He just takes damage. So, this is good for us. And he knows it too. If he can defeat these guys, he can move on quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Alright, so what are these guys? 21. When examined, we're not examining them. They cannot be evaded. Fine. If undefeated, recharge this monster into its location. Fine. Alright, we got a little something something for these guys. Fumbus knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to wait. He knows that um, everything's lost if these things drink out of the pool. Um, and, but Fumbus is all about good timing. He's going to wait until they just get close enough. He suspects, and rightly so, that to complete this kind of ritual that's going to happen is they're all going to dip their heads and drink from this pool at once. And so he's waiting until just the last moment before they're going to do that. He's going to throw um, a bomb in the middle and blow them all up in, in one swoop, in one big boom. This is very exciting for Fumbus. Very exciting. Um... Okay, let's see what this is going to bring him. Fumbus is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dexterity ranged. So it's D10. Ranged is plus 3. Uh, plus 2D8. So let's do these. Perfect. 2D8. Um, and then he is using... He's going to recharge... This card, not that card, not that card. Uh, okay, he's gonna discard. He's gonna recharge this card. Tad fire. D six. That adds another D six. Sixteen and twelve, twenty-eight, thirty-eight to get twenty-one. He's got plus three. Hmm. Give you some more. I got some. I got some blessings here. I'm going to bless this. To add another D10. This is a kind of soft music for what's about to happen. <laughs> It wasn't too long ago. Hey, Last War Poodle, thank you very much. We're going to add another D10. Just notice that. Notice that. Oh, and you know what, Cat? You added something, too. We're going to use yours. Hell yeah. T. Just T. Whoa. 
That's a whole lot of freaking dice, dude. 10, 16, 24, 26, 28, 29, 31, 7 is 38. 38 plus uh, 3 is 41. Exactly 20 more. We get another respect point. Hot damn. Hot damn. All right. And uh, so he throws it, and all of this happens. These these things come in, and they almost like he can see he he like totally syncs up with what these things are and what they're doing because they come and they slow down. And they're like taking their time coming in. It's like it's a it's a ritual kind of thing for them. They're all moving at the same time. These large they look like um, they got shark heads, but then they have like black obsidian bodies, uh, four legs. They come in, uh, and they slow down, and then they all, like, and he's he's hoping that they'll do something like this, and they do. They all, like, look up like they're gonna, like, they're, like, reveling in the ecstasy, looking at the moon. The moon just happens to be right above this. You know, that's something, a little odd note that Fumbus notice, notices. And then he goes, now, it's just something in his mind, he just knows now. He, whew, the tangle burn bag, whew, so quiet. And they go, and then they start coming down, and it lands. It, it, just before the water hits the water, it explodes. Boo-ah! And um, they're all flown, uh, flown back. Blown back. They're all blown back. And uh, he waits a moment. And uh, to see if anything else gets attracted. But nothing else happens. No, and they don't get up. He comes out and he checks each one. And sure enough, every one of them, like, half their head's blown off. About time, Turk. It's about time. It's only like nine nine forty eight on Saturday. What the hell? Um Good work, buddy. Uh to you, Turk, not to well, to Fumbus as well. So to close this location, either succeed at a dexterity or acrobatics check. Dexterity. D ten plus two. He's got to make a 10. D10 plus 2. Um, what did I say he needed to make? He, made a, he needed to make a 10. Alright, he's suffering D6 damage. Oh wait, he doesn't have to. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to Okay. I'm gonna roll one D six. He's gonna take one D six damage. Two. Now reveal this so when he takes well he's gonna reload one of those. Discard the other. As he's checking on the last body. Something in this thing's this this shark beast thing, this e being of evil, uh, something he's it, it lashes out at him and like a and like a death lash. It's like its last thing it's gonna do, and um, he scrambles out of the way. He almost falls off the cliff, uh, and maybe he does just a little bit enough. He has to crawl back. He falls just a bit and catches on, and has to crawl himself back up the cliffside. Taking a little bit of damage, but he's no worse for wear. He's fine. And uh, he's going to head. He's going to head on to um, to uh, the next place next. But this is the end of his turn. We got lucky. We didn't have to worry about that whole location. Ooh. Now, we have three locations and three people. Everything is cool. I'm gonna roll my craft to ten. Hell yeah! I get to recharge this. Awesome. All right, he's gonna draw up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. End of his turn. There are no un. Uh, no, there is. There is. 
the mountain. The mountain is unoccupied, so we're going to lose a totem there. But he'll go there next. No. He's not going to go there. She's going to go there. All right. Heck. Hekon's got to go there. All right. Hekon is... We rejoin Hekon at the, the dunes. We're going to draw the father of creation. When you would discard a boon to bless... What happened last time? To bless strength or constitution or treasure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hekon isn't staying at the dunes. He's going to head to the mountain. He's got to. Otherwise, we lose. Hekon huffs and puffs up the mountain. It's not as easy for him. He's wearing armor and it's larger. We don't have to do it at the start of your turn, BS. He's going to have to do that next time, though. Man. Okay. Uh, he's going to discard a card for the the totem. No, oh, he can't do that. It's the start of his turn. That's all right. The brass dwarf, Constitution Fortitude. He needs an eight. D eight. I'm going to roll it. I'm not worried about it. Holy crap. He got it. All right. That's cool. He's going to discard this to explore again. So... It takes him half the night to get to the mountain. Um, let's say it's, uh, yeah, most of the night. In fact, he gets there and it's almost dawn. And he's tired. And uh, But this part of the trial, I guess maybe the plan was for them to move around these. To always be moving. Um, to try to stop whatever's coming. Not sure where these were going to start. Ha! That's it. That's it. These these uh, land sharks always come from, come from one place. Uh, that doesn't make sense because now Fumbus killed that whole pack. But maybe they're all coming from... Maybe there's a larger group that's all moving together. And uh, as they get to locations, some break off to do the, the to defile the, the holy place. And they don't know which one they're going to start with. And they're like in a circle or of, of sorts. Maybe a swirl. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. And um, Fumbus, when he was done at his location, lit a fire to... Uh, that's that's it. He lit a fire or, or was able to communicate some way, shape, or form with Lenny and Hakon that he had first contact, which means meant that the mountain should be next. Maybe that's a good reason why Hakon went to the mountain. Anyway, when he gets to the mountain, he uh, he finds that uh, that there's something waiting for him there. Biting tigers. This is a this is a barrier though. Before acting, each other local character summons and encounters this barrier. Thankfully, nobody else is here. He has a stealth check now. His stealth is. Dexterity plus three, D6 plus three. What's the dexterity? Oh, so you have to actually. Oh, well, maybe he can. Yes. He's gonna bless this. This lets him bless twice. He gets. He has to bury it. But he's gonna bless. He's gonna roll three D6 and do stealth. His stealth is plus three. Yes.
Um, when he gets there, luckily he sees the tigers before they see him. And um, as tired and clunky as he is, he's, he manages to hide himself as they patrol around the... Ah, they had picked up Lenny's scent, had come to investigate. And Lenny's not there, And but um, they didn't notice Hakon either. Um, no? Why? Sixteen. Well, no, I didn't. Um, what I did? Oh, no, no, no. I um, I rolled uh, stealth. His stealth is um, D six plus three, and I just used a blessing to give him two extra dice on it. Um, instead of him fighting him, if that's what you're wondering. I had him hide. Oh, it's okay. I had him hide. Uh, it made more sense to me at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is one location that does not have anybody, and it's the dunes, because he left it. So we're going to have to get rid of that. Wow, I'm picking the wrong cards, Doug. Because that's banished now. Hmm. Oops. I'm I. What I'm oopsing about is I lost this because I used this as a totem card and now it's banished and that was a pretty good ally. Okay. So Hakon is at at the mountain. Lenny is in the Cinderlands. And she can she can stay there. Everybody can stay where they're at now. Yeah. Okay. The twin. When you would encounter a card, discard to move no oh, no, I'm sorry. On your check, the first item our ally played is played freely. Look at that. New ally. Charisma, diplomacy, and knowledge. Three things that our friend Lenny does not have. Diplomacy and knowledge. Charisma is D6. All right, what's he do? On a local intelligence, wisdom, or diplomacy, non-combat check, recharged, add D8. Huh. Wait a minute, don't I need to check oh the first ally played. I don't think I, I don't uh I don't know if I really want him. So I don't think I'm gonna actually fight for him. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll a d6 because that's what she's got. Um, so Lenny's parked out at the location, the at the stones in the Cinderlands. Uh, it's early morning. A caravan comes by, a small one, just one court, cart, one court, cart, and a wagon, and uh, it pulls up, and uh, the driver seems to want to consider whether or not the water. It senses the water. It sees maybe sees the water um, uh, reflecting off the moonlight, uh, moonlight reflecting off the water, and she can tell he's trying to decide if it's if this is a good place to drink the water or not. 
And after, like, man, after some deliberation, and she's hoping he moves on, the cart moves on. The guy decides he's not going to risk it. Uh, smart. He moves on. Um, she doesn't have... I guess she does. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. She's going to discard to explore. Look at this shit. Vicious Scythe. For combat check, reveal to use 1d10. Strength, maybe 1d10. Hmm. Strength, melee 11. That ain't happening either. Don't worry about it. All right. We won't even enter that in the story. Okay. We lose another totem card out of the dunes because there's no one there. But Fumbus is making his way there now. Worry not. The first night has passed. The, um, the heroes uh, sleep as much as they can throughout the day, getting ready for that night, that, um, for nightfall. Fumbus wakes up early dusk, gets himself ready. He had, um, had, ta had taken him most of the morning to get to the dunes. He was really tired. So actually he wakes up and it's already nightfall. And, uh, he feels good. The moon's starting to rise. No sign of anything yet. The hour is the Tangled Briar. When you close your location, instead of banishing its cards, shuffle them into a random other look. Ooh, that's a shitty blessing, dude. Holy crap, that's a shitty hour, I mean. Hopefully he doesn't draw the bad guys. Is there anything he needs to do beforehand? No. Oh, he's gonna display this armored coat. Huh. We're going to back up for a second. Very, very tired from having traveled most of uh, the dawn and early morning to get to the dunes. Uh, he finds the location, just like Hakon, where he just at one point coming over a dune, he thinks, just when it starts getting really fucking hot, he thinks, oh, this is... this." I've gone the wrong play, wrong direction. I don't know where I... Oh, there it is. Just comes out of nowhere. He finds it. He builds himself... You know, gets himself readied. And goes to sleep. Falls dead dead asleep. Wakes up. It's night. And there's a sword at his throat. Ah, what do we got here? Look at... Look at this little fucker. Old little fucker. Disrespect... <laughs> ugly little fucker. Disrespecting the holy place he is, huh? Ah, he is, huh? And, uh... He looks around and it looks like a slaver caravan had uh, was passing by and the slavers didn't give a shit about taking water out of the... Out of, a lot of people are suspicious about it, or superstitious, but they're not. And uh, Fumbus finds himself grabbed and thrown into a cart. Early morning dunes. <laughs> Yorkshire tea gold. Uh, is that the, does Teagold, the Yorkshire, or the, um, Everstorm thing? So, we gotta get him out of this. Hmm. Okay. It looks like he's gonna find a friend. Dexterity, Diplomacy, Disable, and Stealth. His Disable is, uh, D10 plus 2. We're definitely going to bless that. I'm going to recharge the Irori's Mastery in order to... So he gets back, um, thrown in the back of the wagon. They have no idea how powerful this little dude is. 
So they just throw him in a wagon with a few other folk. Um, he looks around. Um, we'll figure out. We'll find out who this. Uh... Well, let's roll first. He has uh, plus two. That is not the roll we wanted. If undefeated, suffer the scourges dazed and entangled. Okay, we're going to add a die. We're going to add a die. Oof, yes. Three, seven, eight, just barely. Freaking eight, nine. Wow. Random ally. Oh. A woman speaks up uh, as he's uh, scouring. He's looking at his uh, the other people in the wagon. Uh, one of them's asleep. The other one's a woman who's got her eyes trained on him. She says, you, something wrong with you, she says. He goes, yeah, I'm locked in. I'm, yeah, I'm a slave. No, no, there's something. She smells. We need to get you out of here. Yeah, yeah, and she lets off her. And she goes, "I don't." Um, she shows her hands, and she doesn't have shackles on. She says, "I've been free for quite some time, but I don't know how to get the lock off. If I let you free, will you get the lock off, and so that we can get out of here?" Is <laughs> yes. So she um, she um, gets his shackles off of him, picks the lock or uh, picks the shackles. The uh, the lock and the door for the thing. There is no lock. There actually isn't. But they didn't really search Fumbus because they didn't expect him to be an alchemist. He's just a goblin. They didn't bother with looking through his pockets, his mini pockets. And before you know it, the uh, slavers hear this huge BAM! And the back half of their their, their little cart blows off. And uh, uh, Fumbus and the uh, fortune teller are running while the chaos kind of... Uh, the horses go crazy and... Uh, the uh, slavers have their own problems to deal with as uh, Fumbus and the fortune teller head back to the uh, holy place. If defeated, move. The, yep, yep, summon. Yep, we did it. Did it, did it, did it. She, uh, well, I mean, don't fortune tellers look sketchy? Does she, though? I don't know. I guess I like sketch, huh? <laughs> uh, that's a reload, right? That was a reload. Recharge. Sketch brew. We're going to um, we're going to use her as she pulls up to the fort to the holy place. Ooh, what is that? Enormous Reef Claw. Before acting, each local character suffers one combat damage. If this monster would be defeated, reroll. Really? That that thing's a monster. I might as well I might as well face it. She pulls up, she goes. Wait, I sense great evil here. There's something, don't. You need to, I need to go. She goes running off the opposite direction, like further. She's not going to, she refuses to go into the holy the holy place. Of course, Fumbus is, uh, he edges around and uh, looking for what she might be talking about. I mean, it's it's mid-afternoon. Oh, no, it's night. It's night. It's right. Yeah, 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 it's night. He was captured by the slavers at night. He doesn't see the guy, the things that he saw before, so he doesn't think it's them. So what could it possibly be? As he gets into the, in, enters the ring of stones, two hands come really, if you call them hands, claw things come over the side of the pool, and it starts pulling itself up out of the pool. Um, this thing, enormous reef claw, starts snaking its way out. Uh, he's going to suffer one damage, but he can discard. When you discard cards as combat damage, you may reload one of those cards. We're going to do that. We're going to discard this and put it on top of the deck. That's what a reload is. And then we're going to blow this thing. Actually, no. The Venomous Hand Crossbow. 
is out. That's the sound of a crossbow bolt going. Okay, D10, D6. You want a closer look? Plus one, so plus four. Oh, we're gonna add. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna discard this. Tad D six. Add fire to it. It's fire and poison coming at this thing. <laughs> Lights it. And let's see. That's plus four. I said so. Eighteen twenty-eight plus four is thirty-two. Let's. Not terribly good. So we're gonna bless this. We're gonna discard the fiend to bless. So another D10. Right? Yep. Ten, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. So it comes out and furls itself. He draws his his venomous crossbow. You got the little guy and this thing coming out of the water. And it comes down. It, it looks looks around and it looks down, down, down until it sees him. And just as it sees him, it opens its mouth up in anticipation of the feast. And that's when he goes shh, shh. It goes right. It disappears. The flaming poisonous arrow disappears in the darkness of this thing's mouth. And it goes, ah, ah. and uh, the fire goes out. He could, he's pretty sure the fire went out. And the thing kind of shakes its head and it's hurt. Um, and then so, uh, and, it, and it looks back down at him and it starts coming like it had just swallowed the arrow. But that's when the poison kicks in and it starts jerking. First it's limbs and it pulls up and it shakes its head back and forth and uh, starts letting out this growl kind of scream. As its insides start, have already started liquefying, and it falls back into the water. He, um, he runs up and looks in the water after this falls down, and it's crystal clear in the moonlight, and it goes on forever, and this thing's gone. Uh, wherever it came from, it's, it's it returned. Um, that was a discard. That goes back up in his hand. That. MFR is dead. And he's going to draw back up. Seven, four, five, six, seven. We are all good with this, all this totem shit. I was supposed to be discarding cards for him. He would have had to discard the only other totem or blessing he had in his hand, right? Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, Hakon. So Hakon's on the mountain. He spent the day. He wakes up and it's uh, late afternoon, and the. Um, Winds are hitting him really hard, buffeting him against the. Yeah, it's Hakon. It, they're buffeting him against the wind of uh, the uh, mountains. The, I mean, against the mountainside. He's got to do a survival check or wisdom. He is not the per best person for this. Wait, does his survival... No, he's acrobatics, stealth, and diplomacy. Shiza. Okay, he needs to... He's got an 8. He's got to roll a D... 4. Uh, he's going to automatically... Like, he wakes up... And the wind's buffer, buffeting him so badly, 
he um, slams up against the mountainside. He uh, gets fighting it. He's exhausted. So he's now got the scourge exhausted. Wherever I put those. Where did I put those? Did I put them back? Stupid exhaust cards. Okay. Well, I'm not worried about them just yet. He's going to move. Oh, there they are. So let's exhaust it again. Uh, on each check or step, you may play no more than one boon. Okay. Actually, now that he's got that, I was thinking he's going to move, but that's now that he's got it, screw it. He can't play more than one boon. Fine. The hour is the lost. Uh-oh. That doesn't bode very well. When you would recharge a magic boon, discard it instead. Okay, it's not so bad. That's not good. That guy looks pretty awesome, actually. So. He beats back against the wind. Um, that seems to come down and swirl around this the the foothill at the top of the foothill that he's at, and um, he plants his back up against one of the stones to wait out the night. And uh, the wind dies, but then he hears if that sounds like it's gonna start up again, and he braces himself, but that that wind ends up being the wings. Uh, the winged uh, air from a ma a large winged beast that comes flight, kind of circling above the stones, drawn to the to someone entering the uh, the place of power, and uh, the manticore lands outside and begins walking around the stones, looking for him. Before acting, a random character suffers one d four plus one ranged combat damage. Oh yeah, so this thing's gonna. Wait a minute, hold on. He. After acting, oh, these are both after acting. Gosh darn it! Okay, fine, fine. I have two things that will make me ignore after acting powers. This is not after. This is right now before acting. Okay, it sees him, and even though it doesn't want to enter the stone circle, it shoots its spikes tails at him. It spikes off its tail. Uh, one d four plus one. Nothing we can do about that. Gentlemen, three points of damage. Well, there's something I can do. I can. Is that combat damage? It is. Perfect. Two of the spikes are deflected by the helm. It'll reduce it by two. So he only takes one point of damage. And that's okay. We're going to discard this. No, discard this. And we're going to. Display that, his blackjack's gear. Thanks, Fishy. We will you oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> Alright, so I think what you're what we're doing here is you're adding a die to the damage, Fishy. Is that what you want to do? So he takes an additional three points of damage. Um Bastard. All right. Um, one, two, three. Two of the spikes, two of the needles, needles, sorry, feels them bounce off. One rips into his cheek, and he starts moving, and that thing, that thing, uh, mentor whips its tail again, and another three come and hit him, this time finding purchase. Uh, yeah, I got to discard three cards. Um, one, two, three. But now, he's outside of the circle, and he's running at this thing with his thundering Earthbreaker. Do I have anything I can... Okay. He... On your check, you may play no more than one boon. So somebody else can play a blessing. 1d12. Plus 2... 
Uh, I, it says I can't play... No, I can't play more than one boon, but I can certainly do my whole discard... Add my diplomacy shit. For sure. So that is um, four, seven, eight, nine, right? Nine. So, oh, wait, nine, twenty, and uh, thirty-two. Oh, it's just so shy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah I already added the, didn't I? Twelve, and um, nine is twenty. Twenty, yeah. Okay. So close. Uh, this thing's needle stuck in Hakon. He comes roaring out of the circle with his thundering earthbreaker. And that the and uh, when it hits the mast manticore, the uh, it just explodes. Like he he sees the ripple of the force of it hitting it. Like beyond just it's like it like ripples. Like his skin, his flesh, his bone just kind of ripples. And it explodes out. Like gore and bone and sinew all explode out the other side of the manticore as the, uh, the Earthbreaker just um, annihilates it. It falls and he, he hits it again, this time in its face and its head. Just blows its head open. It, it, it was already dead at that point. This was just because fuck you for stabbing me. Uh, and uh, his blood's pumping. Now he's ready for whatever the fuck else is coming. But he's um, he's hurting. He's hurting. At least this thing's dead, though. Um, he's going to end his turn. Two, three, four, five, six. No, no, it's fine. He's going to have to heal soon. Oh, you know what? He can. Okay, he'll do that next turn. Okay. Hakon's all right. We're flipping out from Hakon to Lenny and the Cinderlands. Yeah, this thing's brutal. Uh, Lenny's good. The desert. When you would move during your move step, bury a card. We ain't moving. We ain't moving. Brawl. How the hell am I gonna? Four plus four is eight. Before acting each other, local, local character summons encounters barrier. Ain't nobody here. After all encounters, if any character defeated this barrier, banish it, okay? Hmm. Four and four is eight. She can use dexterity. Right. It's not a combat check. It's a dexterity check. Wait a minute. Okay. A hey, um It's nightfall. It's nightfall for everybody. It's um early evening. A hey, uh she hears thundering. She hears. So at first, she thinks it's thundering. Then she realizes. Then right away, right after that, she realizes it's it's hooves, and a um, a herd. This is going to be a herd of um, of large like wildebeest kind of things. Must have a running from something, which could be the the creatures that are coming here. They're running from them. They come barreling across um, the Cinderland and uh, the wasteland. Look like they're gonna come right for. They're gonna run right past the the um, the stones. She's she's gonna cast divine insight. All yeah, this is what she all she's she hears it. She doesn't know exactly what's happening, uh, and she doesn't know she hasn't met the the creatures that are coming, so she doesn't know if it's them either. So she's gonna cast divine insight. Uh, Any check to defeat a barrier, which is this is uh, banished to add two d six. She's got to roll dexterity, which is d eight for her. And a d6 and a and 2d6 and she all she needs is an eight she sees it for what it is it's a and it, it might be a sign of the creatures that are coming but it is a herd of um beasts that are scared and, and uh, uh, stampeding 
they are going to come through the uh, the stones. Not they don't give a shit about holy lands or anything. So she, but that gives her time to scramble up on top of one of the stones. So Lenny is sitting in cat form as the stampede of wildebeest, large, fantastical wildebeests, come barreling through. She can barely make them out. They're just large and panicked and running through. And um, following them is nothing. Once once they're gone, it's quiet again. There's a whole lot of um, dust, but that's it. Uh, oh, she can roll to see if she gets to keep that. D10. That's that was a six. Plus four is ten. Yep. Recharged. Should we keep going? I feel like yes. Exactly. It was totally Lion King. She's going to discard this to explore again. She was right. It's quiet again, but she feels it, and she stays on top of the stone. And sure enough, the uh, whatever was whatever made the wildebeests run comes slowly, making its way out of the darkness. She at first she just sees patches of darkness, and as it gets closer, she sees the six shapes kind of fan out, each coming in between the stones at a different place to converge in the middle. Now it's her turn to take these guys out. Maybe I shouldn't. All right. Okay, so she needs to discard. She's on her tested, so she needs to discard a card in order to. Yeah. In order to. She gets plus three in the check, just straight off the top. She's going to recharge Fox to go v survival. She's going to stay cat mode, though. Cat. Cat? This is a pack of them. I don't know if a cat is going to do it. Um, yeah, no kidding. Pet fox would be cool. I think she's going to go her, um, that Corvosan house dragon. So uh, while these things kind of come in, she's on top of one of these stones. Big, bright, full moon, and she just morphs into the dragon. Uh, it's got a medium-sized dragon. And uh, they're concentrating on going in. And uh, like Fumbus, she's waiting to see what they're going to do, knowing that she got to stop them from drinking. And they go and they look up, do their thing just like they did with Fumbus, where they look up to the moon. The moon's just above this. And there she is. She unfurls her wings. And uh, they scream and she screams and she pounces. Um, we got to discard that. That's D10. Plus D6. Plus another D6 for being animal trait. Um, that's not enough, though. What are we doing? Um, she needs more. I had something else in mind. What was I doing? Uh, D10, D6. Oh. We need blessings. Blessings. Uh, Fumbus is going to bless her with a d10. So she's got 20 and six and 12, 32. Oh, she got plus three. Oh, wait, she's what, hold on. When <laughs> she's got uh, seven uh, plus three is 10. So she's got plus 10, so she only needs 11. 11. Uh, no, wait, I'm sorry. That was 10. She's got 10 already, plus 10. 20, um, 35, 39. Ah, oh, shit, so close to plus 20, to over 20. Uh, she, these things look up. They scream, she screams, because she unfurls a ring. She, they scream, but she's down, and before they can react, she's already ripped th um, two of their heads open, and then she's on another one. And um, she's got it, and the other two, um, the other three come around, 
And she prowls around between the stones and then goes to the takes to the air. She's got she grabs one, throws it at the other one, uh, both of them hitting, and then both of them uh, kind of one hits the other as she with such force that it throws it into one of the stones. And she swears she hears the stone move a little bit. And that leaves her with just one left. And it comes jumping over the water at her, and she and it, it knows it's gonna die. And she rips it apart in fr- on top of the water. It's uh. It's blood falls in the water, and then she looks, and she can see it with her dragon sight. She can see the blood falling into the water, and then it's gone, and the water's crystal clear again. And she tosses the body aside. Uh, we've got to close this location. Succeed at a constitution, fortitude, or survival check. Eight. That's kind of her jam, so I'm not too worried about Actually, her survival is plus seven. So, yeah, so she made it. Magic water. Um... We have finished the Cinderlands. Now, that goes there. She's out of cards, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now, Fumbus at the Dunes. He can um, see off in the distance the slaver caravan. Um, the fire gets put out, and uh, he can't tell if they've moved on or not, but he's w- waiting, and no one comes back for him. So now it's just him. And the holy spot. The hour is the locksmith. On your check, you may recharge a card to replace all D4s with D8s. Oh. oh, well. Don't mind if I do. All right. Early. Early, early morning. He's, um... He can't sleep. He, he had slept for quite a while. He uh, he had started testing the water. He started. He took a little sample of the water. He's the only one of the three that's going to do it because he's wondering about its powers. Yes. He takes a vial of it, of the water, the magic water we've all kind of been setting up. He takes a vial. Um, he takes a vial, and as he's putting it away, and he's, he's thinking about drinking it just to try it out, when um, he doesn't so much as hear him as he gets kind of like his spidey sense tingles, his little goblin sense tingles. And he um, he scrambles away from the circle, uh, knowing that these things are going to come and go in. The, and he saw them do this before. He is going to, and sure enough, it's them. Oh, shit. He doesn't have a bomb, though, this time. So what is he going to do? He's got to discard a card for his honor testing. Discard that. And... On this, on your check, you may recharge a card to replace all D4s with D8s. Okay. We're going to make use of an hour for once. He's going to cast Force Missile and blow them all up. He's going to cast enough force missiles, basically like magic missile, to hit all six of them. Um, again, waiting till they get just close to the water. He's going to let it go. Um, it's an arcane check plus 2d4, so I'm going to recharge a card to add to make those d4s d8s. Uh, I think this is cool. We'll see. Uh, d8. And then two, his D8, his arcane check is a D8 plus four, right? No, plus three. All right. Um, and then another D8. Three D8 plus four plus three for the honor test is seven. Um, another, okay, seven. Oh, wait, and then, uh, yeah, 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 and then I'll just, uh, 
recharge a card to add fire and venom to this thing. Fuck it. So that's going to be 2d6. So that's cool. Alright, um... What, what did I say? I had 3 plus... Scott plus 6. Okay. Uh, 12, uh, 12, 18, 22, yeah. So, waiting to the just right moment, and, uh, he knows they're gonna look up, and sure enough, they do, up at the big moon that just happens to be right over top of this, and then he lets, he says the words of power, and he doesn't get to use this spell very often, but he's been waiting, he's, like, charged up, and six bolts fly out, and they've, and he... He kind of orchestrated how they're going to go. They kind of fly up, each one taking a different, um, going to the top of the stones, and then coming down on the creatures as they look up at the moon. Sh boom, boom, boom. Expl heads explode. <laughs> Blood, everything, gore goes everywhere. Um, and they fall, the bodies fall. Boom. And a perfect kind of six-sided star coming out of the middle of the... Uh, each one lined up with one of the stones and the, and the well. Spokes, spokes of a wheel. Peace out, land sharks. Uh, to close this, I acquire the top blessing of the hourglass. Cool. And then that's it. That the dunes are done. I'm gonna keep that. That's his force missile, and he gets to do a six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so recharge that, and then um okay. Poor Hacken on the mountain is exhausted. The hour when you suffer damage, suffer the scourge plagued. Ooh. Ugh. It's morning. Hakon um, does his best to make himself um, keep himself out of the wind and goes to sleep. The um, to wait while he's doing that, his friends are on their way to meet him at the mountain, but they haven't got there yet. When he opens his eyes, early evening. Sure, they'll be there soon. Something else has come to drink from the well, his well. Uh, all right, so he's got to discard a card to get plus three. But this guy, I mean, before acting succeeded a wisdom check or, or the difficulty defeat is increased by two. I'm not really that worried about it, buddy. So he's a 14 now. Um, explodey, explodey. Explodey, explodey. Uh, plus six, so he only needs an eight. Stunk. <laughs> so this thing comes cruising around just like the ghoul. Goes around the outside of the, of the circle. And he just waits for the right time to step out and punt it. And away it goes. Trying to decide if he wants to. He's going to use uh, the Lirin Qua Moon Maiden ally. Discard to examine the top card of your location. Ooh, grounded studded leather. You may. That's... Ooh. Okay, so on all combat and fortitude checks for this exploration, he gets to add three, so he might as well encounter this. Constitution, fortitude, d8, plus three. Uh, well, doesn't really give him much. He's, he's got to roll a d8 to get this. Fuck, so close. All right. I don't know how that would have worked into to it anyway. That was a discard. Oh shit, he was supposed to, hold on. He's gonna heal himself. 1d4. 
three. One, two, three. Hekon is going to chill out and wait for the cavalry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And sure enough, after he punts that thing out, uh, he goes back to assume his post, and not a half hour later, um, Lenny comes prowling. At first, he readies himself, and he he goes, okay. He he can tell that whatever's circling the is an is an animal of some sort, but when it comes padding inside the circle and surprising him, he, rea he realizes it's Lenny. Uh, she morphs back into Lenny. Ask him how he's doing. The avalanche. When you suffer damage on your turn, each other local character suffers one damage of the same type. Yeah. She morphs back into herself. And uh. Are you okay? We they are, and she explains to him what they are and and um, uh, what she saw and what they should be ready for. And uh, it's a good thing she's telling them because the moment she's done telling him that, they hear or rather feel them something different in the air. It goes calm. The wind's gone. The moon is directly above. That's the big sign, right? The moon's directly above them. That's when these if these things are going to come. That's when they come. And sure enough. They sh shadows detach from the trees and the six things start coming in. And um, meanwhile, Hakon and ha uh, Lenny's up. Well, this is Lenny. Hakon fades back against the mountaintop and uh, Lenny assumes a form on top of one of the stones. I think she's going to go dragon again. For show. Or bat. Because <laughs> she has a bat. Let's do this. This is Lenny's. And she's going to do it. Um, okay. D10 plus 2D6. And then we're going to... Oh, she's got a discard a card because she's honor bound. She's got plus 3 plus 10. And then I'm not going to fuck around. I'm going to discard this to bless. Um, another D10. She, needs, she just needs 11. I've got... <laughs> she's just so powerful now. I've got her um, survival up to uh, 7. It's crazy. Twelve, um, 22, 27, plus 10 is 37. Damn, so close again. But no, no cigar. So this time, uh, she uh, she takes out the yeah, yeah. So when they start coming in, she takes off before they get there. And she's flying around, waiting instead of um, being on top of the stone. And as she comes in, and Hakon readies himself, and he's about to come out as these things come in. He's not as patient as uh, Lenny and Fumbus are. They're they're just entering the circle, and he's trying to figure out how he's going to take all of these, all six of them. If Lenny's going to take one or two, and or three, and he'll take three. And uh, but before he uh, before he even moves out, suddenly the um, her wings block out the sun. She's like a gigantic bat kind of thing. She comes flying in, and uh, whoo, whoo, she flies in between, grabbing them and taking them. Oh, where's she? oh they're on the mountain. So she takes one, and they all sw swing. Look. And she takes and she drops one off the side of the cliff, and then she comes back down. And they, um, as they they go to pounce, uh, all of them on on her. Well, she moves so fast they can't even see them. She's like, shoo, they they don't even know where she's coming from. And she swoops, she grabs another one, throws it out, and another one. And finally, there's one left or three left, and Hakon um, smashes um, Earth Smasher on the ground to catch their attention, throw them off as she grabs yet another one. And before it, one by one, they all are thrown off the side of the cliff by Linny. In her giant bat form. And then morning breaks. And uh, Fumbus comes walking in. And uh, 
What's up, bitches? <laughs> and uh, the morning set, uh, the morning comes up, and uh, they all look at each other. This was actually trial was a lot easier than the last two. Let's say it. Let's put it that way. And they all head together down the mountain to meet with the Shawantis. Uh, and that's where we end tonight. Uh, let's see. We are all. Let's see how they end it for the story. Okay. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, we'll tell you what this led to. So they've 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 made themselves honorable. They've gotten all the respect they can on the Shawanti tribe. Now we're going to be moving into the fifth, the fifth adventure, which is the next part of this story. Um, after this, and we'll cover that in the next episode. Uh, felt like I had a little bit of a rocky start. Sorry about that. Um, I felt like I got into the groove, though. This is typically what happens. I get into the groove. Uh, thank you guys for joining me, all of you, and I will check you tomorrow night on Drunks and Dragons, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Y'all have yourselves a wonderful night. Fever the Dungeon.